Hey guys, welcome back for part two of creating a GraphQL server with Node.js. So in the previous um, video, we just created a GraphQL endpoint that allowed us to query our data. Um, it wasn't coming from a database, it was just something that we hard coded in our text editor. If we have a look here, um, we can see what we got back from uh, uh, Express and GraphQL is what we typed into here. Um, but that's not really useful, and what we'd like, what I'd like to do in this episode is just integrate um, Mongoose, uh, which is a MongoDB wrapper, um, so we can actually store this information in uh, a database of some sort. So um, to get started, I'm just going to get rid of this resolve for now, and we're just going to leave this blank. Um, but what we need to do first is, of course, install Mongoose. So let's stop the server. Let's just use Control C and use Yarn. Uh, we just want to add Mongoose. Now, in order for uh, Mongoose to talk to a database, uh, we have to have a um, uh, an endpoint for the GraphQL URI. Um, so what I like to do in Terminal is just export that. Um, if you just type export uh, MongoDB underscore URI, and then that's equal to your um, MongoDB instance on your machine. Now, I use Homebrew to install um, Mo uh, Mongo, so Mongo is already running on my machine. I'll leave some notes in uh, this video on how you can set up uh, Mongo. Um, but yeah, I'm assuming that you've done that already. Um, so we have this now, and we're just running on localhost, and the name of our database is event site. So we just uh, hit return and that will make that available to us on the process when node runs so it can get access to that MongoDB URI. Um, then um, we've installed Mongoose, we've created the URI, we then need to create an actual um, file instead of a folder called uh, db. And this uh, file index.js is where I like to um, uh, set up uh, the instance of Mongo and Mongoose. So we'll create a constant called Mongoose and that's just gonna import Mongoose surprisingly. Um, Mongoose needs to know what kind of promise you wish to use, um, which promise library. I'm just gonna use the global promise in Node.js at the moment. Uh, there are other things called Bluebird, things like that. Um, I think Mongoose is actually dropping the support for the global promise. I'm not too sure on that, um, but uh, we, we can change that to be a different promise library uh, like Bluebird um, later on. Uh, connect uh, in here is where we pass, pass in our MongoDB URI uh, environment variable. And that's again available to us because we exported it, it before um, in our terminal. And when we run node, it will um, pick that up inside of here. Um, then uh, another thing that I like to do is um, when Mongoose actually um, we need to create a constant actually called connection and we'll just make that equal to mongoose.connection and when that is available uh, we can then just call connection and um, when it closes I like to run a function um, that just kind of tells us that it's uh, connection closed you know you know we need to know that the connection is closed and then obviously you need to quit out of the process that that node is running. Um, that just tells the, the parent process node to um, exit and, and bail from that. Um, we need to obviously export this and we'll export Mongoose and everything that we've attached to it. Um, so that kind of connects Mongoose and, and gets things going whenever we require that file. And then we need to create a file called event and this is going to be our um, schema or model for Mongoose. So again, we'll include uh, Mongoose, but instead of actually calling the Mongoose directory, we'll just call the Mongoose file that we created. And because we exported it, we've got access to Mongoose, uh, the connection, the promise, things like that um, is all attached there. Um, from Mongoose, uh, we will just the event schema, uh, oops, uh, Mongoose for now. Um, we'll export a new Mongoose model and we're going to call the model event and then we're going to create a schema here um, and we will create a name because that's what we said it was going to be 
um, in our event type. We have name and date, and that's what we'll put in here. Um, type is string, and we'll make this required. And the same goes for date. Um, we'll create a type, and we'll call this actually date, so it stores a date for us, and we'll make that um, we'll make that required as well. Um, so you have to insert a date. Um, when you're creating a new event. Um, actually, we'll leave that blank for now. Um, you can just write um, your schema like that, um, and this is this is optional now. Um, so let's, let's, yeah, let's show uh, something that's required and optional. So with that created, we're pretty much almost there. Um, one of the other things um, inside of our queries that we'll need to do, um, inside the promise here is, this is where we are going to be calling um, to the event model. So I'll import event. Um, that is from a folder called db and event. And then all the way down here, uh, we can just do event find by ID and we are going to pass in the ID. Um, uh, no, we don't do it like that actually. Um, then um, this ID um, is given to us by uh, our arguments. So instead of just instead of doing this, um, we can get rid of that and just use uh, ES2015 destruction and pull the ID from that. We then are going to do something called a prediction, um, which will create a select statement for us. Now this is a, a utility that we'll um, write next. Um, it's not something that I've created. Um, I just found something online, but I'll explain what that does in a little bit. Um, we then need to, um, we don't need to use the context or the options in GraphQL for this resolver, uh, but we need to access those field ASTs. Um, so the field ASTs are um, these things here, ID, name, uh, and, and date. Those are our ASTs for that. Um, we'll then execute the command, and then using the promise, when the promise is returned from event find by ID, we can just get that data and run resolve data. And if there is an error, we'll catch it, and we will call um, reject, and we'll pass that to the reject handler. So this will just call out to uh, our promise and say, hey, I've been rejected, um, or it will resolve that data. Uh, so that's about it to actually call from our from our database. Um, now, I said we need to create that projection, and what we need to do here is actually create a constant called projection, and this will be called get projection, and we'll pass in those field, field ASTs. So we'll also import get projection, and we'll create a folder called uh, details and create a file called projection. Cool, so let's do that now. Um, folder, and we'll call that projection, and we'll insert that there. Cool, um, brilliant. So now all we need to do uh, is export from here, um, a function and remember that um, we passed in the field AST so we've got access to it in the function here um, and we need to return uh, a, a reducer function. Um, we need to get the field nodes and selection set is just something that you would use in Mongoose um, and we need to reduce on those um, projections. Selection. Um, projections um, for each projection uh, selection names of value um, so we're passing in name we then need to get the value we're basically just creating a map here um, of what we're asking from Mon uh, mongoose and what it returns um, so we need to yep return that please um, and if that doesn't exist I think we just need to return an empty object Cool, so it moves on. Um, that is about it for connecting um, 
mongoose with our node backend. If we just run node source, everything should be going, but it is not. Um, we have an error, this error. Um, is an error. Cannot read property event of undefined. Um, db event full. Okay. Um, so let's have a look inside of our event file. Um, just, yeah, let's get rid of that. Cool. Um, okay, open is deprecated. Um, okay, cool. Um, fine um, we're actually up and running cool let's head on over to the browser and if we run GraphQL if we execute this now it's going to error on us because um, it's saying this is not a object ID and that's what um, mongoose is expecting um, so we can just object ID um, example Let's just get an example object ID. There was one there. Um, let's just grab that for now. If we pass that in there, that will work, but it's also going to return an error. Um, no, the event hasn't been found. Um, so there was there was nothing there. Um, but that is about it for that. Um, we have GraphQL with our Express API connected to Mongoose. Um, and we can now call out to the database and there's nothing there, so there's nothing to return. In the next video, we will create mutation so we can then add a event to the Mongoose database. So it's all pretty simple stuff. Um, when you actually break it down into smaller chunks, what I'm trying to do here. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe. Please leave a comment. Let me know how I can improve these videos. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the future. So cool. Stay tuned for uh, part three. Um, have a great day. And most importantly, happy coding.